I'm Jake Heron with Today's Shit Evidence, and today we are going to be discussing distant starlight and how it does not prove that the universe is old. So God created the universe about 6,000 years ago, and he created the stars on day four. And these stars, they're millions of light years away. So how did the light get from those stars to Earth in only 6,000 years? For those of you that don't know, a light year is the distance that light travels in a year. So if you had a star that's a million light years away, it would take a million years for the light to get to Earth. But that's not how Earth, but it, it doesn't have that much time. It's only had 6,000 years to get here. So how are all these stars, how is the light from all these stars here? It's crazy. And so there's many theories as to how it's here. The first being that space is divided up into different time zones, kind of like Earth. And, um, it, so like it leaves the star on day four, and it gets to Earth on day four, cosmic local time. It leaves on day four, cosmic local time, cosmic local time, gets here on day four, cosmic local time. So imagine a plane going from New York to Tennessee, and it, it leaves, it leaves at four o'clock, and the flight's an hour. So it leaves at four, goes to Tennessee, and then it lands at four o'clock local time, um, Tennessee time. So, it's, this is possible because New York is in a different time zone than Tennessee and it's an hour ahead. So the plane, it, it, it takes off at four o'clock in New York while it's three o'clock in Tennessee, flies, and then over the course of the hour that it's in the air, Tennessee is also going, it, it's also going from three o'clock to four o'clock. So it lands at four o'clock Tennessee time. As long as the plane's going west at the right speed, that's it. It, it would always be four o'clock, four o'clock, four o'clock, four o'clock, because of the different time zones. And so the same could be true for space. Is like the light is um, a plane always traveling west, and it, it it goes through these different time zones. And so it leaves a star on day four, cosmic local time, goes through the time zones day four, day four, stays at day four, and gets to Earth day four, cosmic local time. So that's one way that it could have that it could be here, and so far nobody has been able to prove that the Bible does not use cosmic local time. So there's a very good chance that that's how the starlight has got here. Um, another theory is that the speed of light was faster in the past, which usually people think that the speed of light has always been constant. About uh, the speed of light today is about. It goes. It's. It takes one year to go six trillion miles, so it's pretty fast. Um, and so, but has it always been constant? Some people think that it has not. If we were to incorrectly assume that today's speed of light has always been the speed of light, we would get. We, we would get an age far older than the age of the, the than the true age of the Earth. Um, People have proposed that it may have been faster in the past, uh, and it, it could it, that it could have traveled the universe in a fraction of what it takes today. Um, however, it the, if the speed of light changed, many other things would change too, such as the ratio of energy to mass in any system. Some people argue that the speed of light cannot have been different because of its because it is so connected to other constants of nature. Um, the, if the speed of light were any different in the past, then life may not have even existed, uh, may not have even been able to exist. So that's the second theory. A third, so, yeah, it's not a very likely one, but it's still possible. A third theory is that, well, the speed of time, time, not light, time, is different in different conditions. So, in a, uh, the, the closer you get to the speed of light, the slower time goes. Albert Einstein discovered that. And also, the more gravity something has, it, it, well, time goes slower in gravitational well. And the more the gravity, the slower the time goes. Einstein also discovered that. Um, so, time on Earth is fast, is slower than time out in space. And time on the sun is slower than time on Earth because it has more mass. It's, it has... Um, more gravity. And also, the closer you are to the source of the gravity, the slower the time will go. So, a clock at sea level 
would tick slower than a clock up high on a mountain. Um, and so if the Earth was at the center of a finite amount of galaxies, at the, like at the center, and then it would be closer to the source of the gravity, which means that time would go a lot slower here than in the outer reaches of the galaxy, where, so, where it would be going a lot faster. So millions of years may have gone by way out there, while only thousands have gone by here on Earth. And that's another possibility. The only thing about that is that is it slow, slower run up here than it is way out where the stars are coming from, where the light from the stars is originating? Is it different enough to create a big enough gap? So that'd be the what that that'd be really the only problem with that theory. Um, the fourth is that the fourth theory is that people tend to assume that God had to use supernatural forces, um, that God had to use natural forces, but he didn't. He, 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 he's not bound by the laws of nature. Um, he created the world. He created the universe supernaturally. So he very easily could have got the starlight from the stars to here supernaturally. Because he's not bound by the laws of nature. He usually follows the laws of nature. But he doesn't act them. So, and, when, and so evolutionists always try to disprove creation with the distance starlight problem, saying that it proves an old universe, when they have a light travel time problem of their own. It's called the horizon problem. Um, in the Big Bang model, all everything started in a singularity, and there was an explosion, it all rapidly expanded. And so, and the temperatures, and, and it would develop different temperatures in different locations. So say point A is really hot, and point A is really cool. So the universe keeps expanding, it gets to where it is today, point A and point B are really far apart from each other now. But see, the current temperature of the universe is very constant uh, to the farthest out we can see. It's very constant. And um, we know this because of electromagnetic radiation coming in all directions in the form of microwaves. And this and these are extremely uniform in all the directions that they're coming from. So we know that the temperature is very constant across the entire universe. But if it's constant, then how did points A and B, how did they um, become the same temperature? They would have to exchange radiation. They'd have to exchange energy. Uh, an example of that would be an ice cube and a cup of hot chocolate. The hot ch chocolate cools down, the ice cube heats up. And so that's what would have had to happen with points A and B. They would have to transfer energy. But there hasn't, in the 14 billion years since the Big Bang supposedly happened, that hasn't been enough time for the light to get from, for the light and radiation to get from point A to point B. So they should still be very different temperatures, but that's not what we find. We find a very uniform universe when it comes to temperature. And so that's a very big problem for evolutionists. Um, so our conclusion is that critics use a number of assumptions in order to di disprove us with the distant, with distant starlight. Um, many of these assumptions are questionable. How do we know that the speed of light has always been today's speed? Um, this, that, perhaps that is reasonable, but how can we know that? But how can we know that for certain? Particularly when God was using supernatural forces to create the universe. Do we know that the Bible uses cosmic universal time instead of cosmic local time where light reaches the earth instantly? Um, uh, we know that the flow we know that the flow rate of time is not rigid, not it's not always constant. Uh, and since stars were made supernaturally during creation week, how do we know that God didn't use supernatural forces to get the light here? Furthermore, when evolutionists Try to try to disprove us. Try to disprove us with the distant starlight. It's a self-refuting argument be because they have their own travel time, light travel time problem, and it's a big one. Um, so when we consider all this, the distant starlight cannot be used to disprove creation and a young Earth. Um, we may never know how this starlight got here, but we can. We do have an argument against evolutionists when they try to disprove us. 
Thank you guys so much for watching. Please like and subscribe. If you have any questions or comments, leave them in the comments below. Um, visit our website. I'm supplying a link to that, an article about distance starlight, and an article about the horizon problem in the description. Thank you all so much, and have a great rest of your day.